matter. Does it matter? Why does it matter? When does it matter? It always matters. What does matter? It's anything that has mass and anything that has volume or anything that has density. That's right. Anything that has density is matter. If you can weigh it and you can take its volume all the way from a single atom up to the biggest star, it's all made of matter. What are the different kinds of matter? Well, first thing you need to know is that pure matter is homogeneous. In other words, the sample is entirely the same composition throughout. The simplest kind of matter is called an element. This is copper. This is an example of a pure element. This is copper, Cu on the periodic table. All atoms of copper contain the same number of protons. Now, they may not contain the same number of neutrons. That's called isotopes. We'll get into that a little bit later in this whole thing. But this is a pure element. Now, when you want to draw an element, you can symbolically represent an element by using circles or dots to represent atoms of an element. If you want to show them in a specific phase, that's easy to do also. If you want to show them as a solid, then draw them as a crystal lattice. If you want to draw them as a liquid, then don't draw them in a crystal lattice. If you want to draw it as a gas, show the atoms far apart from each other with plenty of space in between them. But those are atoms of an element. That is the simplest form of matter that there is. All matter can be broken down into elements. Elements cannot be broken down any further. So if you see a symbol for an element, like copper, you can't break it down into anything simpler. You're done. If you take elements and combine them together, you make compounds. This is a compound. This is a compound called copper 2 sulfate, sometimes referred to as cupric sulfate. Its formula contains one copper, one sulfur, and four oxygen atoms per formula unit of copper sulfate. You can decompose this compound into an atom of copper, an atom of sulfur, and four atoms of oxygen. Compounds can be broken down into elements using a process called decomposition. There's all kinds of ways to do this. You can use heat, you can use electricity, but compounds can be decomposed into elements, but elements cannot be decomposed any further. Compounds can be decomposed by chemical change because you're changing the chemical composition of your substance. If you wanted to draw copper to sulfate, what you would do is maybe we could use a circle for the copper, a filled-in circle for the sulfur, and for the oxygen, maybe a circle with an X in it. And this would be, technically, it's not really a molecule. We'll get into that when we deal with bonding. But this could be represented as a molecule of copper to sulfate. One copper, one sulfur, four oxygens. You see the difference? If these were atoms, these would be separated from each other. But because they're all bonded together, this represents a molecule or a compound. Now, let's say you take two elements and put them together, but they don't chemically react with each other. Or you take an element and a compound and you put them together, but they don't chemically react with each other. What you end up with is something known as a mixture. This right here is a mixture of copper 2 sulfate, that's this stuff right here, dissolved into water to make a solution. This is referred to as a mixture. A mixture is made of two or more substances that are physically combined without actually chemically reacting to each other. They just happen to be in the same place at the same time. Now, solutions are homogeneous because their particles are evenly distributed on the molecular level. In other words, if you zoomed right into this, down to the molecular level, you would see an even dispersion of the different particles in this mixture. If you wanted to draw a diagram of a mixture, what you would do was draw the substances in the mixture, but not bonded together. For example, here's an element. Let's mix a compound with it. Unlike in a compound where the composition is fixed, 
for example, one atom of this to one atom of that. The ratio in a mixture is not fixed. In other words, I could add more compound and we would still have the same solution. Solutions can be separated by simply evaporating away the solvent or the water. So if I wanted to get the copper sulfate back out of this, all I would have to do is heat it up to evaporate the water away and I'd be left with my copper sulfate. That would be a physical change because I'm not changing anybody's chemical composition. If I wanted to separate this mixture, all I would have to do is to heat it up because it's just copper sulfate that's been dissolved in water. So all I would need to do is heat this up, the water would evaporate away, it's still water, and the copper sulfate would be left behind. It's still copper sulfate. Since all you're doing is separating the components out and not changing what they are, it's a physical change. Okay, so that was an example of a homogeneous solution. Now, what about a heterogeneous mixture? Well, here's a heterogeneous mixture. It's a mixture of water, which I've added blue food coloring to, and mineral oil, which is on top. Now, I could try to homogenize it by simply shaking it, like you might do to salad dressing. But we're still going to have, if you zoom in, and not even too far, big globs of water and big globs of oil next to each other. At the molecular level, they're not evenly distributed. Therefore, no matter how much I shake this, it'll never become homogeneous. Unless, of course, I put something in that makes the water and oil mix together like soap. It's called an emulsifier, and then I could homogenize it. But because I've got great big globs, if I zoom in on this, well, you can't zoom in enough with this camera, but if you were to zoom in with a microscope, you would see the separate globs. Other examples of heterogeneous mixtures include stuff like, well, soil, Italian dressing, worms and dirt, delicious, or vomit, my absolute favorite, because it's never the same twice, and no matter where you look, you're never going to find exactly the same thing as you peel through it. Disgusting, yes, but remember, vomit is heterogeneous, and it's a mixture. You can separate it by physical means. You can pick out the little pieces of this and the little pieces of that without actually changing what they are. If you want to separate out the mixture called worms and dirt, just pull the worms out of the dirt. You've just separated the mixture. Physical separation, as opposed to the chemical separation that's needed to separate the elements in a compound. And that's the different types of matters. Elements, which are pure, simplest form of matter that cannot be decomposed. Compounds, which can be decomposed into elements by using a chemical change called decomposition. Homogeneous mixtures, frequently called solutions, which can be separated by physical change, simply mechanically separating the pieces from each other by some physical change, such as evaporation. And heterogeneous mixtures where the composition is not the same throughout, where the particles are not evenly dispersed at the molecular level. And those are the forms of matter.